major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening. It's Wednesday, December 8th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi, and it's called Access for All, a new statewide goal to make outdoor space available to everyone. And today, one local community was on the receiving end of the half-billion-dollar plan. KPBS reporter John Carroll is live in San Ysidro at the site of what will become Buyer Park with details. John? Maya, this land behind me is currently fenced off, as you can see, not available for public use, but over the coming years, it will be transformed into a 13-acre park called, as you said, Buyer Park, with a lot of really cool features. The from Interior Secretary Deb Holland, State Parks officials, and San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria. San Diego is getting about $25 million of that $550 million total for a, a number of new parks and renovations of older parks across the city. Eight and a half million of that grant money is getting the process going here. It's now in the design phase, and once that's complete, the project will go out to bid. San Diego City Parks Director Andy Field told me today if the funding stream comes through as a officials hope the new park could be complete in three to five years. This is in City Council member Vivian Moreno's district and she said today this park was promised 20 years ago. Mayor Gloria says the focus now is when it comes to parks is the city's Parks for All of Us initiative. We'll hear from him first then Interior Secretary Holland on how important green open spaces are to the health of people and the planet. This is an opportunity to invest in a community that has been underrepresented and underinvested in for decades. And this is an opportunity for us to build something that future generations of San Diegans will certainly cherish and enjoy. By fostering long term partnerships with these communities, city parks and other urban green spaces are working to ensure that every community has a meaningful chance to build a mutually beneficial relationship with the surrounding wildlife and its habitats. Some highlights of the new Buyer Park. It will have a large turf area in the middle. It will have dog park areas for both large and small dogs. And, get this, it's going to have a skate park. So a really neat addition to this neighborhood. Just have to wait a few years. Live outside the future Buyer Park in San Isidro, John Carroll, KPBS News. Starting on January 1st, workers within San Diego city limits will receive a minimum wage increase from $14 to $15 per hour. KPBS Speak City Heights reporter Jacob Ayer looks at what the wage bump means for residents and for businesses. On busy El Cajon Boulevard, there is no shortage of small businesses. One of those storefronts is Lily Couture, which specializes in West African designs and clothing from Togo. Owner Lily Lare says she's worried about the minimum wage increase set to take effect on January 1st, as she's already faced increased shipping fees and low sales. I have my own manufacturer back home, and then I import all the time. So uh, it's already affecting, because last time I wanted to do the shipment, the price doubled. And then I couldn't, because I didn't budget for it. While San Diego businesses will be required to pay employees $15 per hour, California's law slightly differs. On January 1st, it will be $14 an hour for small businesses and $15 an hour for those with more than 26 employees. In 2023, the rate goes to $15 an hour for all California businesses. Lari says she understands the need for higher wages in an increasingly expensive California, but wishes there was a way to help small businesses afford to hire people. That's all I can say, because we, we can't stop them to raise the, the minimum wage. People have to leave too and they need that money to survive because the rent, everything, and myself here, the rent is gonna go up next, next month. 
Next door to Lily Couture is El Borrego Restaurant. Co-owner Rodnia Atik says she feels the pressure of wage increases with her small staff. Even though that we here feel like we are like a family and we, we support each other, that's not enough because the people need the money to live. And everything is increasing in San Diego. So that's another thing. Uh, what's going to happen? I don't know. I think we have to in increase the prices. California's minimum wage may keep going up even after 2023. The state attorney general is reviewing a ballot proposal to raise it again, up to $18 an hour by 2026. Its backers are trying to get the measure onto the November ballot. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas visited San Diego to celebrate the border's reopening to non-essential travel. It comes as local activists criticize the Biden administration for continuing to block access to asylum seekers. KPBS border reporter Gustavo Solis has more. DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas came to the San Ysidro Port of Entry to tout the economic impact of the border reopening. I'm extraordinarily pleased to, uh, uh, to be here at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. But reporters pressed him on the humanitarian crisis unfolding at the border, where a federal judge ordered the Biden administration to resurrect a controversial Trump-era policy known as Remain in Mexico. The policy forces asylum seekers to live and wait in Mexico until their court cases are adjudicated. When asked what message Mayorkas has for the migrants, he told them not to come illegally. I cannot communicate this message too strongly, that individuals should not put their life savings in the hands of smuggling organizations that exploit their vulnerability. But local activists were quick to point out that Biden's decision to expand Remain in Mexico will put even more migrants in harm's way. They are expanding the population of people who will be sent back to danger, who will be subjected to the, to the risk of extortion, of, of uh, kidnapping, of murder, and all these things that we've seen amply documented. Biden's version of Remain in Mexico applies to all nationalities in the Western Hemisphere. This includes Haitians, Brazilians, and Jamaicans. Trump's version was limited to migrants from Spanish-speaking countries. Gustavo Solis, KPBS News. There is a new safe space for undocumented students at San Diego Mesa College. As KPBS education reporter M.G. Perez shows us, the Dreamer Resource Center provides support and critical information to students who find themselves tangled in their immigration status. This ribbon cutting in the student services building at San Diego Mesa College comes with lots of buzz and butterflies. Monarch butterflies freely migrate, showing how migration is both beautiful and natural. The symbolic butterflies represent students who are attending school here with undocumented immigration status and the so-called dreamers, brought to the U.S. as young children by their undocumented parents. Yolanda Granados was one of them. When I was 19, I was actually at school taking a final, and my mom got deported. I had nowhere to go. I had no space to run. I had no one to talk to or lean to or counselor to open up to. So having a space like this is important. The Dreamers Resource Center is a place that will provide free legal services, career counseling, education workshops, anything undocumented students need to feel supported and accepted. Kind of like a like a home, a safe place, because I can be around people that are like me. Um, I don't have to hide who I am. Grant money, donations, state funding, and the students themselves made the Dreamers Resource Center happen. It's taken more than five years to get to this opening celebration. The Dreamers have awakened, and they are here. And we have created space for you to dream even bigger dreams now. I was actually able to further my education, transfer to Cal State Long Beach, and graduate in the spring of 2021. So, thank you. Yolanda Granado's happy ending is inspiration for the 450 current Mesa College students who are undocumented and working on their education, as well as the others who will come after. Proud to be undocumented, unafraid, unapologetic, and hashtag here to stay. M.G. Perez, KPBS News. 
The makers of the Pfizer vaccine say Omicron is changing how many doses they recommend for people. The company's chief scientific officer says a third shot offers the strongest protections against the new variant. It also raises antibody levels 25-fold. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the news is encouraging, but there's still more we need to know. Learn a little bit more, as we will over the next few days to weeks, about the transmissibility as well as the degree of severity of disease. Dr. Fauci says he hopes the news about Omicron and vaccinations is going to push people to get their booster shot. San Diego County was the first to declare a public health crisis over misinformation about COVID-19. One way the county is countering it is by holding regular medical panels. Here's KPBS reporter Kitty Alvarado. COVID doesn't exist. Poisonous vaccines. Outside these walls, COVID doesn't exist. That's just a taste of what was shared during public comment about COVID-19 during Tuesday's Board of Supervisors meeting. San Diego is currently in the high or red level of transmission. And that was after the public health officer, Dr. Wilma Wooten, showed the latest data comparing non-vaccinated versus vaccinated county residents. The case rate was about three times higher. The hospitalization rate among residents not fully vaccinated was about 28 times higher. The death rate for not fully vaccinated vaccinated residents was seven times higher. In September, the board voted to declare misinformation a public health crisis. Board Chair Nathan Fletcher led the charge. And the reality is misinformation in today's environment is literally killing people. And as a county, as a public health agency, as a people, we have to confront this. To that end, the county has a website dedicated to informing the community about the virus and dispel common myths. Good morning, everyone. And now, after every meeting, misinformation about the virus shared during public comment is compiled and discussed the next day by a panel of doctors on a publicly accessible Zoom meeting. The new variant can evade natural immunity. Dr. Christian Ramers, the chief of population health at Family Health Centers of San Diego, is one of the panelists. Misinformation travels so much faster than good scientific information. He says while it's hard to fight the avalanche of constant misinformation, it's important to start somewhere, and these panels are a great start. He's seen patients who've died or been severely sick and will suffer lifelong side effects because of COVID misinformation. Many of them specifically cite bad facts for why they didn't get the vaccine um, and, a, and a real misunderstanding of risks and benefits. And says many of them tell him they don't have the opportunity of getting information directly from a doctor until it's too late. So hopefully this is a way to sort of make it more readily available to the public of San Diego. Kitty Alvarado, KPBS News. California could become a sanctuary for those seeking abortions if the U.S. Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Dozens of abortion providers and advocacy groups released a report today. They're asking state lawmakers to pay for travel, lodging, and child care for those coming to California from other states for abortions. The report also asks lawmakers to reimburse procedures performed for patients who can't afford them. Governor Newsom and top legislative leaders have signaled their support. A program to help better respond to mental health calls is expanding to the rest of the county. The Mobile Crisis Response Team sends specifically trained and qualified team members to respond to health and substance abuse calls. That takes police officers out of the mix unless they are needed because of safety concerns. I mean, a stroke, you don't send law enforcement as the response. Um, and, and it ought to be the same. Uh, if you're having a mental health episode, unless you're a danger to yourself or someone else. The program first launched in January in coastal cities in North County, but yesterday the County Board of Supervisors voted to expand it countywide. It's expected to cost about $10 million. Thousands of catalytic converters have been reported stolen from cars in San Diego County. Surveillance videos show thieves getting away with the converter before anyone even notices. KPBS reporter Tanya Thorne takes a closer look at how this is happening. They're being dubbed cat burglars, but they're not after your jewels. Their target, catalytic converters, a part found underneath cars that reduces their harmful emissions. Thieves stole catalytic converters from Vista resident Amanda Hendricks twice. The first time, her converter was stolen three days before Christmas. Thankfully, the um, insurance 
took care of it. They told the police came, they told us park it in the driveway under a light that will discourage. So we did it, everything they said. Um, then April came along and happened again. This time, her ring camera got footage of the theft happening. Her car was jacked up and the converter stolen in under four minutes. It's very frustrating. I'm a light sleeper anyway. And then it just, it adds a level of anxiety that, you know, you, you feel like those are your private things, you know, and to have somebody coming and damaging it, taking it apart, you know, and it just, it felt like such a violation. And she's not the only one. This year, more than 1,500 converter thefts have been reported in San Diego. Cameras have captured thefts happening in broad daylight in public places. But why have catalytic converters become a hot commodity? The parts contain platinum and rhodium, and the price per ounce for these precious metals has gone up in the last year. Toyota Prius converters contain more of these metals, making them the biggest targets. And they're cutting them anywhere from here to there, wherever they can, and uh, run off with them, put them in the trunk and leave, you know. Tony English owns Wholesale Performance Muffler in Escondido. He says he sees cars whose converters have been stolen every week, especially after the weekend. They steal the catalytic converters and they sell them to recyclers, you know. Uh, most of the legit recyclers won't buy them, but there are, uh, you know, they, they trickle it down somehow and they get them sold somewhere. Some insurances do cover stolen catalytic converters, but they don't cover the shield that protects the converter from theft. And that is a Prius shield to keep from stealing the Prius catalytic converter. English says he's installing more of them. Priuses, for instance, are $3,600 just in parts when somebody steals your catalytic converter. So a $500 shield really sounds like a really good investment, you know. While the shields protect the converter, law enforcement is trying to crack down on the thefts happening across the county. What's happening before is if someone was contacted with um, catalytic converters, say in the middle of the night, and we didn't, we weren't able to link them to a crime, that was, you know, what we we believe was stolen property, but um, we needed a victim to, you know, file a case, matched up to a car. Lieutenant Bode Barrett with the Escondido Police Department says the district attorney's office has given police the green light to start making arrests. In speaking with the district attorney's office, they're saying there is no other reason to have these things in the middle of the night, um, and they are stolen property. So we have the probable cause to make that arrest and they will file on those cases. Lieutenant Barrett says since no arrests were being made due to the pandemic, thieves were getting bold. So bold that in August, thieves stole a catalytic converter from an Escondido Police Department van. Surveillance footage helped police catch the thieves. Chula Vista was able to make a stop on that vehicle about four days later. Um, there were some catalytic converters in that vehicle at the time. Um, unfortunately, because of the time frame difference between the, the, the days, uh, we didn't get a, a conviction on our case, but I mean, the, the person was uh, contacted by law enforcement. Police departments have also hosted events where community members can get their catalytic converters engraved with their VIN number in case it is ever stolen. Officials recommend parking your vehicle inside a garage or in a well-lit area, getting security cameras and alarms, and consider getting a cat shield to protect the converter. Tanya Thorne, KPBS News. Commercial airlines could one day fly into Carlsbad. A longer runway is part of the master plan for the McClellan Palomar Airport approved by San Diego County supervisors today. The airport manager says the expansion is needed for safety, but would also make it quieter because planes could take off quicker and get higher faster. Under the plan, staff will work with the FAA on noise concerns, which could include quiet hours for takeoffs and for landings. <laughs> We've got our next cold front pushing south, and along with it, here comes the rain as we head into Thursday. A little bit of a quieter pattern beyond that as we head towards Friday and this weekend before we have another storm that looks just as powerful as we head into the early part of the next work week. So we'll be tracking that moving forward. As we head into tonight, temperatures get down into the low 50s in Oceanside, mid to upper 50s in San Diego. Some of that rain already arriving later tonight. Chula Vista getting down to 55. Brago Springs.
brings a 50 degrees for your overnight low. Here's that front on Thursday. Behind it, the colder air pushing further and further south. And again, rain showers will be likely from Los Angeles all the way down to San Diego here. So good soaking rain possible here with this first round of wet weather. Temperatures, we're looking at 50s for you from Escondido on towards Ramona, El Cajon, Chula Vista. Across uh, some of the deserts, we're looking at mid-60s for highs, 61 out towards Oceanside, and then heading towards Friday again. It's going to be a little bit windier here across the southwest, and that cold air continues to press into the interior spots here. I mentioned, though, that possibility of another storm next week. That's going to be moving into the northwest this weekend and then pressing southward as we head into next week. And I do think that one's going to bring more in the way of rain for us here across the uh, southern parts of California as we likely head into Monday night and Tuesday. So over the next couple days near the coast beyond Thursday, we look to bring back that sunshine for you Friday, Saturday, and I think it's a Sunday and the clouds really increase with a little bit of some cooler air arriving Monday out ahead of that next storm. Further inland, rain showers possible for you Thursday, then a sunny and a dry Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the clouds really begin to increase there heading into Monday. In the mountains, temperatures in the low 40s for you over the next several days with dry weather beyond Thursday and similar pattern here in the desert. We have some showers on Thursday, otherwise temperatures holding steady in the 60s with dry conditions through Monday. For KPBS News, I'm meteorologist Jessica Pash. Food insecurity can be especially painful during the holiday season. KPBS Speak City Heights reporter Jacob Ayer looks at a local effort to deliver fresh produce straight from the garden to those who need it the most. Yeah, we have more, but they're all like in bags. Whether it's fruits or vegetables, the little red wagon outside of Brittany Rodarte's Rolando home is often full of her community's excess produce. That's because she's the founder of Dietitian Cooks, a nonprofit organization that encourages community members to donate their excess produce from the store or their gardens to those in need. Currently we're growing cool season produce. Um, so we have things like snow peas, uh, all the brassicas, this, so things like kale and romanesco, broccoli. Uh, we try to um, support local seed growers as well. Rodarte says fresh produce is hard to come by at most food donation centers. That inspired the Produce for the People program, which was founded at the beginning of this year to combat the skyrocketing hunger and food insecurity in San Diego caused by the pandemic. So we ranged for about six months worth about 700 pounds of produce. So since then, I would say at least a thousand pounds of produce have been donated from these efforts. She says the program also encourages environmental sustainability, whether it's growing your own food or cutting back on food waste. Plus, produce drop-offs that aren't high enough quality aren't wasted. They help feed Rodarte's chickens, which leads to eggs that can be donated. Behind me is the Brown Building in City Heights, where Produce for the People drops off their food. On Thursdays, the mutual aid fund We All We Got distributes that food along with other canned goods. Produce for the People also has a second drop box for the fresh fruits and vegetables in North Park. In the near future, Rodarte plans to expand the nonprofit's reach through a new program called Sponsor a Family Vegetable Box, which sources produce from local farms. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, Republican and some Democratic senators push back on President Biden's vaccine mandate for businesses. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. Hi, I'm John Decker. Thank you for watching Evening Edition on KPBS. Now more than ever, local news is essential to our democracy. And KPBS is committed to delivering local news in San Diego and the Imperial Valley. Evening Edition, along with our other services on radio, digital, and podcasts, is how our news team delivers the news to you. How can we do it? With a passion for accurate storytelling and a commitment to excellence in journalism. But most importantly, we do it with your support, our members, our viewers. If you've already donated to KPBS, then we thank you very much for your continued support. If you haven't had a chance to donate, now is a great time to show how much you appreciate the news we deliver. So please go online and choose a level, pick a gift at kpbs.org, or call or text donate at 1-800-576-5727, and thank you. This was a day of holiday joy for hundreds of San Diego military families. KPBS reporter Melissa May takes us to a big toy giveaway. Oh my gosh. 
the Armed Services YMCA has been running Operation Holiday Joy for 32 years. Our military members guard our, they preserve our legacy of freedom. So this is just a subtle or small thing we can do. That's Tim Nye, the executive director of the Armed Services YMCA that's located in Murphy Canyon, which houses the largest concentration of off-base military and their families in the world. This event fills up in just about 12 minutes, so it's very, very quick. Um, but the families will go through and get their selection of toys, which are all staged by volunteers last night in different age groups, bikes, all kinds of different assortment of toys. And for those older kids, there's gift cards and such. About 430 junior enlisted families with 1,300 children will be receiving two gifts and some stocking stuffers picked out by their parents during this event. Several volunteers, including some notable San Diego sports figures, helped bring some early holiday cheer to the families. We're happy to be here. We're happy to support our military. We're happy to support this city. Including Landon Donovan, manager of the San Diego Loyal. Today has been incredibly filled with gratitude from people, and that's been really nice. Padre's new manager, Bob Melvin, made his first public appearance during Operation Holiday Joy. Just looking at, uh, you know, all the kids here and being able to be part of the families and, and see some smiles on the faces, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Melvin was a personal shopper for several families and says events like this are what the holidays are all about. Giving in the families and, you know, now with with incorporating the military, it's just, just such a great feeling. It's, it's an exciting experience. This is my first time for this here today and just driving up here, um, you know, kind of gives you goosebumps. It's like one armed services wife family that comes together to strengthen our military family. Melissa May, KPBS News. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. And by viewers like you, thank you.